Hi, I'm Mike Haru. Uh, I am one of the organizers of the 2021 College Villa Workshop on Scientific Software with an emphasis on software teams. Um, uh, we're talking today with the uh, members of the Fair 4S, Fair 4RS uh, team. Uh, uh, Dan Katz is here from the University of Illinois, Michelle Barker from the Research Software Alliance at uh, Carnes. I, I, I'm probably not saying that correctly. Please correct it for me in Australia. And then uh, Paula Martinez from the Research Software Alliance in Brisbane. Um, first, as we get started, I'd like the three of you to introduce yourselves. Maybe we we'll start with uh, Dan and then Paula and, and then uh, Michelle. Yeah, thanks, Mike. Um, so yeah, I'm Dan Katz. I'm the chief scientist at NCSA uh, and a research associate professor in computer science, electrical and computer engineering in our School of Information Sciences. Thank you. Paula? Hi, I'm Paula Martinez. I am the community manager for the Research Software Alliance. And I also joined the ARDC, the Australian Research Data Commons as project coordinator. Very good. Thank you, Michelle. And I'm Michelle Barker. I'm the director of the Research Software Alliance and also a private consultant. And I live in Cairns in Australia. Thank you very much for correcting my pronunciation. Um, all right. Uh, so, so I'd like to kind of uh, keep this in two parts. We want to certainly understand a bit about FAIR and FAIR for RS. Uh, because I still think there are some people in the community who are maybe not so familiar. You know, they, they've heard the terms, but maybe not so familiar with the, you know, the, the fundamental principles. And then in the second part, I, which, you know, which fits with the software teams theme of the Collegeville workshop, is I'd love to hear you talk about the software team, the team that has been developing and socializing the FAIR 4RS uh, 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 principles. And so, um, Dan, I think you, maybe you can speak to the FAIR and FAIR for RS concepts. Um, yeah, so I, I think the, maybe the first thing is to think about FAIR as a, um, a set of um, principles that are uh, intended to be used for research objects, uh, research outputs, um, findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. And, and so these are, um, these are ideas that are intended to make these objects more, more useful, um, more used, and to make research uh, better in the end. Um, and, and I think probably most people would agree that, right, that we would want our research software to be findable and to be um, uh, interoperable and, and accessible and, and, and all of these things. Um, and so I think that all is, is quite reasonable. Um, the problem that comes up is that the FAIR principles were defined initially for research data. And because they were defined for research data, they actually are defined for research data in the context of research data repositories and research data creators. Um, and so if you try just to take the principles that were developed, and there's, um, there's four high-level principles and then 15 more detailed principles, uh, if you try to apply those to research software, you quickly run into some problems because research software is not the same as data. Uh, you can store software as data, but it has all sorts of properties that make it much more interesting um, in, in some ways, at least to me. Um, and, and so you really have to look at those properties and try to figure out how do you change the principles in order to reflect those properties and in order to get to this goal of having the software be as uh, as, as findable as possible, as accessible as possible, as interoperable as possible, and as reusable as possible. Um, and so the, what we've kind of come to is that uh, these high-level principles, again, mostly are reasonable and understandable. It's not completely obvious what interoperable means for software uh, versus reusable. Um, and if those are the same or different, so there's a little bit of question about that. But then the, the, the real questions are, how do we actually apply these things. So how do you make data, at, sorry, how do you make software findable? Um, right, if, if your software is on GitHub, is it findable? Do you need to create a deposit of your software into Nodo? Do you need to write a paper about your software? Um, and, so, and so these are the questions that we're trying to answer with the FAIR for Research Software principles. Um, I think the, um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll just stop there at this point. Okay, yeah, thank you very much, Dan. Um, 
so uh, as I read the, the paper, um, one of the things I found interesting is that you're basing your approach on uh, the Center for Scientific Collaboration and Community Engagement uh, Participation Model, uh, you know, which says four modes of stakeholder engagement. Um, Paula, could you speak to that a bit? Yes, yeah, sure. So in my role as community manager for Visa, I had the opportunity to take the course that CSSC um, develops and where we go through the process of engagement, engagement in different communities uh, with different um, focuses and with people um, that might be located in different locations, which is um, our group. We are uh, a global group, a mostly online group, and we, we determine to to have opportunities of participation in different modes. And that's why we adopted the model. So people can um, receive information. So they are mainly consumers. We have a lot of modes for this. We usually post all the communications in via mailing list. We, we use social media as well. And we, we use GitHub for our public meetings. Then we have another mode of uh, that it's called contributions, where we have, for example, discussions in town halls or during workshops, and people are also invited to provide feedback in uh, collaborative documents and also via chat. Uh, once people are getting more and more involved, they, they want to um, collaborate in developing the workshop and putting their ideas, representing their community, how their community is adapting or implementing some of the recommendations that we have and also writing together um, for the publications that, that we, we are producing. And the, the, the mode that we would like to achieve for most of the members and that we are walking towards that is um, major participation in co-creation. So they can co-lead events with, with us or in their particular region or particular community. They can start writing blog posts about their experiences and how they're sharing uh, what we do. And also they're always welcome to, to take the initiative and be part of the steering committee. Very good. Thank you very much. Yeah. And, and what I find interesting about your description and the model you use, not only just for Fair for RS and other activities of the Research Software Alliance, is that it, it, um, you know, there are other efforts that are, that are underway to evolve standards or you know, collective policy statements. And, and I think the effort that you're, you have here can be an example for other people who have to uh, do similar kind of work. So I find that very interesting. Uh, thank you. Um, so uh, oh, please, a, yeah, of course, minute, Dan, go for it. Second. I guess yeah. I wanted to say that I think that one of the things that's really been interesting about the group is that we've been able to apply this kind of in a, in a hierarchical um, way in, in some sense, that there, that there are a bunch of different activities and each one of them um, can kind of have people at these different levels as well as the overall yeah. activity. So. So we started off with four subgroups that were looking at different aspects of the problem, right? Each of which had a leader, each of which had participants, each of which had observers, each of which had people that provided comments. Um, and, and then we brought all those together. And so that was then a different opportunity for people to come in and to be involved in that kind of merging process. And, and then we're now in this kind of review process, which again is yet another opportunity for people to come in at different levels. And, and then there will be other pieces that we'll be going to in the future. So. So I think yeah. it's, it's nice that people can come in, not just at one time, but that there are different opportunities for people to, to enter and, and to switch roles from different sub-activities. Yeah, yeah it's very, is a very important please, yeah. point about the, yeah. the healthy growth of our community. So we started with a seed group of members, about 50 people, and we are currently 210, which yeah. makes us see what importance has this topic for a lot of people and with the recurrence of our events we always invite more people to join and we have the flexibility for them to participate from work subgroup work that that it's maybe three to, to six months so at the time they join the group they still have the opportunity to provide feedback and be very involved 
Yeah, very good. Very good. Yeah, yeah I, I'm taking some very nice lessons away from this. Thank you very much. Um, so Michelle, um, yes, of course, please. Yeah, I would add that the CSCCE model uh, is really useful to apply to any kind of uh, group situation, whether it's a large community uh, such as we're trying to develop with many hundreds of people globally or uh, just your team, because it recognizes that everyone has different modes of engaging, uh, whether it be your personal communication style or whether it's your availability or enthusiasm for a project. So uh, it's useful if you could enable your team or community to have a, a whole scaffolded range of ways that they can choose uh, to, to decide how they uh, engage uh, from reading your newsletter or reading a report or reading a blog right through to you know, becoming a, a steering committee member. Uh, and this kind of scaffolding can really help people move up the, 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 the uh, the, the modes, if you like, that uh, when you start a, a new team or a new group, uh, you always want co-creators at the highest level, we'll always say, who's going to come and run this with me? Uh, but it's actually quite hard, usually for uh, newcomers in, in the conversation to say, yes, I feel comfortable enough, knowledgeable enough, understand the culture of, of what's happening here uh, to, to come in at that level. So if you provide that scaffold approach, they could start by reading things, then join a, a webinar or a workshop and progress through to uh, to being involved in management. Um, that, that's one way of making people more comfortable. Yeah, that's great. That, those are excellent observations. Go ahead, Dan, please. I, I was just going to say for people that are um, involved in the in the workshop and watching this from there, um, the uh, the interview with um, Abby Mays is, is kind of has a bunch of overlap to this, and it's looking at a slightly different model, but it's interesting because a lot of the a lot of the basic ideas are the same, even though there's slightly different terminology. Um, so it seems like there's definitely some interesting principle here that's been proven in a few different contexts. Very good. Yeah, thank you. This is excellent. Um, so so uh, I, I know the Fair 4 RS document uh, report has been out for review, right? Um, recently, uh, what, what, at least one phase of it. But, you know, and so maybe Michelle, you could you know address where the process is right now, and and talk a bit to us about uh, some of the next steps. Yeah, sure. When we started thinking about how to convene this work, we we were uh, conscious that there are a number of groups who've already been thinking about how to apply uh, parts of Fair to research software. So we formed this working group uh, across the Research Software Alliance, the Research Data Alliance, and, and Force Eleven to bring together all those efforts and have one much larger community conversation about what the principles should be. So uh, as you say, we're at the stage now at the almost uh, final point of developing the principles. Uh, they're going through a, a formal uh, community review process and in a couple of weeks, uh, then we'll have finished that and, and released the, the, the end product of the principles. Uh, but we all know that developing a set of principles is a very useful first step in getting change in a community or a sector, but there needs to be a lot more work to get adoption uh, and, and, and use uh, happening. So the next phase for the working group, uh, when the working group, the Fair for RS working group started in about April last year, we had an 18 month time frame. Uh, actually a bit longer. The next stage is now to think about how to create adoption guidelines and identify use cases. And actually there's a lot of adoption guidelines uh, already existent uh, in our community on how to do elements of FAIR. Um, uh, that, so we'll see who we can partner with amongst those to say you've already covered some of the principles in your tool or your toolkit or your framework, you know, how could we help you add in a few more so that you tick off more of the, the FAIR principles in, in your, um, your guidelines on how to improve your software. And then we'll also be working uh, to identify some use cases and writing them up and learning from them on how adoption of the principles work so that there'll be some more materials coming out uh, that different types of, of uh, software developers or different types of organizations, different types of challenges can get some ideas on how they might apply uh, some of this in, in their own environment. Uh, but it's also useful to recognize that uh, many software developers do some of these things in, in their environment. There's very simple things like 
having a DOI or a license for your software, uh, which fits with being fair. It, 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 it's, it's uh, you know, ticking off a couple of the boxes already. Uh, so hopefully those guidelines will also help people realize that they're already on that road. They are probably themselves or their teams or their community are already doing some of those practices and then to identify uh, what some of the additional things uh, uh, might be that they really uh, see value in, in adding uh, to their project. Oh, very good. Very one, nicely stated. Please, Dan. One, I was going to say one thing that kind of follows on from that, which Michelle um, didn't talk about, but we are also thinking about is, is metrics. Um, and so if you're already doing some things that are making your software somewhat fair, um, can we actually tell you what you're doing and, and what some of the next things might be um, for, an yeah. for an individual developer? Can we say that your, I don't know, that your, your software is is, is kind of 50% fair and here are the things that you need to do to get to do a higher percentage. Um, and, yeah. I, and I think this is actually, it's kind of an interesting challenge because it's not, we're, we're in some sense trying to quantify something that isn't necessarily quantitative inherently. Yeah. And so I don't, I honestly don't know how this is gonna go, but I think there, there are things we can measure and make, mark progress against and there are other things that are, that are less clear. And so kind of how we, uh, how, we, how we blend those together, I think, is one of the questions that we'll be looking at as well. Yeah. Well, yeah. as you said, uh, principles are, are a good first step and a, I think an essential first step, right? Yeah. Michelle, yeah, I, would, ahead, I, would, I would build on what Dan uh, was talking about with regards to metrics. That The metrics are a great way of, of identifying community health as well. Uh, so we have had some good conversations with the CHAOS team. I think that stands for Community mm -hmm. Health Analytics for Open Source Software, uh, who yes. do uh, yes. some great work identifying how metrics can help you, you know, improve the sustainability of your work, improve community engagement, uh, think about governance, think about diversity. Uh, there's a whole range of social outcomes, uh, you know, uh, that, that can be achieved um, beyond uh, building just the you know effectiveness or efficiency of your software. Yeah, very good. Thank you. Um, any uh, last minute comments? Um, <clears throat> uh, our, another aspect of our group is that we are under a structure that that has a limited time to to go, to to finish this effort. So we are supposed to finish uh, the principles and the guidelines and examples in a 18 month period but mm -hmm. after that we, we will really like to spin off new communities as Dan mentioned the metrics working group the implementation working group probably other groups that are going to target specific um, topics after the perforas are published and in the yeah. community already yeah very good very good um, so, well, well, thank you very much. I think it for really in two ways. First of all, for put, you know working on fair and fair for RS uh, activities, um, I think these principles, at least as in my own experience, are in, in a sense fundamental. They're they're a kind of you know fundamental basis set. You you know there are four of them. You and you you, you can't get rid of any one of them without losing a big part of the picture. And yet, um, if you added a fifth, it's probably pretty well covered by the existing four. So it really is a nice foundation um, for us to think about. And then extending that to research software is a, a fascinating endeavor. And to understand the distinction between data sets and software as data is also very interesting. And then also thank you for uh, illustrating an effective community model for engaging people as a, as a team and as teams of teams. It's also very edifying for anybody else who needs to do a similar kind of uh, policy or adoption type of approach. Any other last minute comments? Yeah, I, I would just add uh, that, of course, we're very open to having more people yeah. involved. And yeah, I think sure. if you read the paper, then it's got links to how to join the community to be on our email list, and then yes. you'll uh, be up to date on events that you might want to get involved in or as we form new subgroups probably in the next couple of months to think about the adoption guidelines and use cases uh, there's plenty of opportunities and we're also uh, equally interested in hearing from the community where they see ways forward uh, where they have use cases or adoption examples or other ideas on how we can take this uh, work forward we've already got a, a couple of organizations who've identified themselves 
as early adopters and uh, we'll be writing up some of those examples so the community can understand how their peers are applying this and uh, their goals and some of the challenges that they see in doing this. Well, thank you very much. And, um, and I guess on, on my side, I kind of want, maybe I'll make two quick points uh, or yeah, two please. things. One is, um, one is just to mention that this, this work um, has been partially supported by the Sloan Foundation and by the Wellcome Trust, um, as well as by the institutions that a number of us work for that have kind of donated some of our time. Um, and so it's it's been nice to be able to kind of assemble all these different pieces and all these different people together into this, into this project. Um, the other thing is I, I, I kind of want to then um, actually disagree with you about uh, adding the, adding a fifth letter or, or something else beyond here. Oh, okay, very good. Yes, yeah, please. I, I think there actually are lots of other things that we could do. And I think that we shouldn't think of FAIR as the goal, um, but we okay. should think of FAIR as kind of a step towards a goal. Um, and there, are, there are other steps, but um, because we don't have another half hour to talk about this, maybe we'll have to hold this for the workshop itself. All right, sounds good. Well, thank you, Dan. Thanks for your comments. Uh, and, and thank you, Paula, Michelle, Dan, um, for, for uh, speaking with me today and uh, making contribution to the workshop uh, through this uh, video. Uh, thanks. Bye-bye.